Hello everyone and welcome back to a new list video. In this one we're gonna talk about my top 50 singles of 2022. These are the 50 tracks that I ended up coming back to the most. I'm gonna just include one song per artist just so that the list would not get filled with few artists having multiple songs out of this list. And yeah, I don't really have nothing more to add. This is just my opinion and we're gonna start with five honorable mentions starting with Clearview by Sophie Powers. This was actually a pleasantly surprising pop punk and electro pop song which in my opinion was pretty well executed. I'm not really that much into the genre but I honestly found a lot of enjoyment out of this particular song. Next up is Chad Pyle's Slaughterhouse, a really powerful, intense, noise rock song. Melodically this is certainly one of the best moments out of the album and I like how impactful it is and how good it sounds. Next up is System by Sevdaliza. I was hoping that the EP would just have more moments like this because I really like this particular song. It is a really chill, sort of trip hop song that has a really nice atmosphere to it. It's kinda moody, it's kinda dark and I would hope that the rest of the EP would have more moments like this. Then is the track The Town by Ethismos. Honestly, a really good drill song. Cool deliveries, nice lyrics and a really solid beat. A very good production overall. And finally at the honorable mentions is the track Polyglamorous by Glances of Bordeaux. This is a very small up and coming Greek band in which I happen to know one of the members. I decided to check out the works and I was honestly pleasantly surprised with what I've heard over here. This is actually a very catchy post punk and new wave track. I personally found enjoyment out of this song and I honestly suggest you to go and check this out. This is certainly one of the most underground things I recommend and I give a shout out to and I believe that they deserve it. I believe that they made a really good job with this particular song. And now with the honorable mentions out of the way we get into the list. At number 50 we have the track Lives at War Othered by Like Witch. Out of this new split with Bastard Noise the Like Witch side was absolutely insane. I believe that this is possibly the best when it comes to production and textures. If you're looking for some really powerful noise with intense soundscapes then I believe that Like Witch did a spectacular job with his side and this opening is an absolute killer. At number 49 is Bite Back with Algiers, Billy Woods and Backwash. An insane collection of names, a really solid collaboration and a track that while it's quite lengthy it has a nice payoff to it. I like the variety of this one and I believe that every single one of the artists featured over here has something to bring to the table with their own unique styles and deliveries making this certainly one of the most intriguing tracks out of the previous year. Number 48 is Intrusive by Rico Nasty, one of the more aggressive sides of Rico Nasty, which is one of my personal favorites. Also fusing elements with some more drum and bass instrumentals, making for an experience that is at least somewhat different. Once again, really like the flows and the deliveries out of Rico Nasty, and I believe that this instrumental is really good as well. Number 47 is the Experimental Attachment Style by Kavari, a really dark and noisy song with an insane use of hardcore breaks, can be a little bit all over the place at times but it makes for a pretty intriguing and interesting song to say the least. Number 46 I actually have Pussin P by Ghana featuring Young Thug. This is possibly unexpected but I ended up liking this song more than I was expecting. I believe that it's a really fun song and I kinda dig this instrumental. Obviously when it comes to the lyrical content it's really stupid and nonsensical. I don't like the lyrics or the delivery from both artists but I honestly really dig the instrumental and I believe it's a pretty fun song. Number 45 is A Curiel by Rabbi My Dear. I don't know how to pronounce this track's name, but I really love this fusion of metal, experimental music and breakcore with also elements of like children's music. It is a weird combination of sounds that makes for a really wacky experience, but if you're looking for something that is similar to Igor, then I believe that there are some quite good elements about this album and especially with this particular song. Number 44 is Thun by Nas. Out of the brand new album King's Disease 3, this was possibly my favorite song. Really like the instrumental out of this one and some solid deliveries from Nas. It is kinda standard when it comes to hip hop directions but I believe that it gets the job done and it's a really enjoyable song. Number 43 is Remember the Rainbow Bridge by Croatian Amor. Really soothing Gabian techno song with some nice sounds and beautiful female ethereal vocals. It is a song that I didn't really know where to put in the list because I don't really get 
get that much back into this song. However, I'm oftentimes reminded how good of a song it is when it comes to creating a really nice and beautiful atmosphere to it. On the contrary, at number 42, we have STD Cox by Prurient, a really aggressive, harsh noise and power electronic song that goes into one of my favorite directions of Prurient when it comes to really glitchy, disturbing sounds filled with high ear piercing frequencies. This one is hard to sit through, but it makes for a really rewarding experience when it comes to just a really filthy and aggressive song. Number 41 is The Dark Away by Grand Theft Audio, a bit of a slower track in comparison to the more energetic rock and electronic stuff that we get with the majority of this album, but the way it hits a little bit different in the sense that it has possibly the most infectious and the most memorable chorus out of this whole album, and in general it's a really well-crafted alternative rock song. Number 40 is Briefly by Nils Fram. This is a massive song, but one that is just so soothing and so relaxing and just simply so rewarding to just sit through and listen to this whole experience. It is really beautiful, a really calm song with some of my favorite compositions when it comes to Nils Fram. Number 39 is Restlessly Towards by Park Chiha. Very unique and intriguing experience out of this one. This is a quite minimal song with traditional Korean music elements and it sounds certainly interesting. It creates a weird atmosphere that you can't necessarily say that it's soothing or all that beautiful, but it has something to it that makes it impactful and leaves an impression on you. It is a really intriguing song and definitely one of my highlights out of the previous year. Number 38 is the intense and powerful A Love Letter by Ken Mode. A really solid starting point for this brand new Ken Mode album, an intense and furious noise rock song that also has this saxophone solo that just elevates the experience even further. Kind experimental at points, but for the most part we're talking about just a really powerful and really engaging noise rock song. Number 37 is Boiler Room by Mamalek, definitely one of the most experimental and weirdest stuff that I've heard out of the previous year. A weird combination of like metal with jazzy elements, some haunting and intense vocals and in general a lot of variation. It is a bit of a lengthy song but it has a lot going on to it and it's full of surprises. Number 36 is My Suicide Suite but My Six Sour by Suicide Boys and Germ. This became such a grower on me. I didn't expect this late out of the year that I would end up finding such enjoyment out of this particular song but I ended up coming back to it over and over again and I find this to be a really infectious and very addictive trap song with certainly one of the greatest instrumentals that I've heard from both of those artists. This one is actually sick. Number 35 is Swefelgelb's White Canug. This ended up being also a bit of a grower on me as I ended up coming back to this song and finding a lot of enjoyment out of it. It is certainly one of my favorites when it comes to this industrial techno direction that Swefelgelb overall of those years have paved the path for a really standard and distinct sound in their catalog and this is certainly one of the best tracks that they've done in my opinion. Number 34 is Nylon Nights with Sonya. Also attached with a really nice video clip, Nylon Nights is undoubtedly one of the most standout heavy metal songs to be released in 2022. Powerful, refreshing, with great riffs, great vocals and an overall really well executed song. Number 33 is Speak of the Devil by Horror. This particular song gives more of like a 2000s metal aesthetic with surprisingly good clean vocals and some really solid deliveries and production out of it. Somehow while this is certainly not what you would expect from Horror, this ended up being the track that worked the best in my opinion. Number 32 is the highly energetic Need You by Lil Texas. Really digging the more standard trance direction out of this one, also having a drum and bass beat switch at certain occasions. It makes for a kinda refreshing song at the sound of Lil Texas, which in my opinion works tremendously, actually making for one of my favorite songs out of Lil Texas. This one is highly energetic with solid production and yeah, it just kicks ass. Number 31 is Zigzag by Ramstein. In my opinion, Ramstein just know how to make great singles and Zigzag didn't disappoint. The more electronic elements out of this song sound incredible, it is pretty intense, it has a really distinct chorus to it, and in general it follows the standard Ramstein formula which works 
really nice once again. Number 30 is the track Hatchet by Spore, definitely one of my favorite drum and bass songs out of the previous year. It doesn't reach the levels that we've seen with other Spore tracks in the past, but when it comes to more energetic, hard hitting and catchy drum and bass songs, do not miss on Hatchet. Number 29, we keep up with the drum and bass tracks with Wordless by Noisia. The song is from their final album which had lots of songs that were previously released many years before, but in the case of Wordless this was one of the deep cuts which ended up feeling like one of the best moments out of the album. It is also a bit different in comparison to what we get with most of the album as this one goes into a more of a liquid drum and bass direction. With a bit of a more dark atmosphere to it than what you were used to in the genre, it has a nice pacing to it and yeah, I overall really really like this particular song. Number 28 is this track by Gesio Akeol, which I don't know how to pronounce it, I don't speak Turkish, the title is down there. Now this one ended up being the biggest highlight on the album on me. Excellent use of traditional Turkish music with more minimal electronic pitch, the vocals and the additional effects definitely do stand out and yeah, it is a pretty intriguing, kinda unique and refreshing song that just works really good in my opinion. Number 27 is Paranormalium by Voivod. What an amazing introduction and certainly a track that I didn't expect to like as much as I did, but this is a really good technical thrash song. Really nice structures, quite varied, very catchy. Yeah, really solid song in my opinion. Number 26, this is certainly one of the most intriguing songs out of this list. It's the track We Cry Together by Kendrick Lamar, featuring Taylor Page, where they both give a stunning performance through a story being told of a powerful arguing back and forth, profanity, and a hard hitting depiction of toxic relationships. The way this whole track has been done, delivered, and performed definitely showcases why Kendrick Kendrick Lamar is considered one of the most impactful hip hop artists of our generation. It's not one of those tracks that can make you go back to listen to it all the time, but it certainly leaves an impact on you. Getting halfway towards the list at number 25, we have Triangle Pit by Otto Von Sera. After really liking this stupidly fun animal out of 2021, I wasn't really that much disappointed with Triangle Pit. Out of the new tracks Otto Von Sera released in 2022, this was the one that ended up sticking out to me the most. Vocals once again sound pretty outlandish, but the beat and the production are really solid. A really wacky electronic song that can definitely not be for anyone, but it's a fun experience. Number 24 is X1 by Technical Leads. When it comes to Technical Leads, he has built a staple over his sound on Darkstep. And this track feels pretty familiar and it still delivers. X1 contains all of the elements that makes a Technical Leads song powerful and eccentric. And this definitely makes for one of my favorite drum and bass songs out of the previous year. Number 23 is Brainwash by JK Flesh. Really digging the newer stuff out of JK Flesh and Brainwash was such a hard hitting, brutal and filthy industrial techno song. With those newer directions of JK Flesh going into a bit of a slower tempo than what you would expect in industrial techno, but managing to get the job well done on creating this very dark and heavy atmosphere. Number 22 is Triponomics by Soul Glow. One of the more different tracks out of this entire album as it ends up going into a more standard hardcore hip hop and trap direction with with noisy production and not really containing any of the more hardcore punk elements that we see with pretty much the rest of the album. However, even if we get a more standard trap direction over here, it makes for one of the best trap bangers out of the previous year. This track feels chaotic, it's noisy, it's intense and it's one of the most addictive hard hitting trap songs out of the previous year. Number 21 is Machina by Boy Harsher featuring Mariana Saldana. This track and also quite a few tracks out of the Runner soundtrack kinda abandoned the more dark wave stuff that Boy Harsher made a name out of. But Machina is a fantastic return on the more old school 80s sound of new wave and disco music. It captures the aesthetic perfectly and it makes for one of the catchiest and most fun songs out of 2022. Number 20 is Last in the Club by Pascal. I was in between this one and the much more energetic fascination, but Last in the Club ended up being the song I returned to the most. While it is of a slower tempo and going more into a dark wave direction rather than a more EBM one that we see for the majority of the album, Last in the Club's dark aesthetics are absolutely spectacular. The scenes over here are majestic and the overall simplicity is enough to make the song quite effective and yes, yeah, certainly one of my biggest growers out of 2022. 
Number 19 is Find Love by Hikaru Tada, a song that starts off really strong and in a really cheerful tone, but I really like the twist towards the end where we get this amazing trap instrumental, which elevates the song in a direction that I didn't really expect it to go, but it takes you by surprise and it works amazingly. The overall production, the vocals are once again really beautiful, a really solid electronic and pop song. Number 18 is Erase Me From You by Aria. I was hoping that we would get more tracks like this out of the new Aria album, which ended up not really being one of my favorites. But wow, this is such a gorgeous electropop song. Actually being a bit more moody and melancholic than what I was anticipating, but this worked so well. Loving the sentiment and the sound out of this track, it's a really beautiful electropop song. Number 17 is Atopos by Björk. It's really impressive how after all of those years, Björk's music still manages to be refreshing and one of a kind when it comes to art pop. Atopos is a fantastic introduction with some of the biggest strengths that we see in this album. Kind of an experimental and wacky song with a beat just getting more and more weird and intense as the track goes on and with some amazing vocal performances once again from Björk. She has an amazing voice, definitely one of my favorite Björk songs out of her recent works. Number 16 is the track OK by KC. Love how refreshing and unique this one sounds. This is definitely one of my favorite works when it comes to Jess Affelstein in terms of production. Like I said in my review, there's nothing particularly special about KC's delivery and vocals, but the instrumental being all of those minimal scenes with no beat attached to it somehow ends up working in an amazing way and definitely making for one of the more refreshing and unique experiences I've ever had in an R&B song. And like I said before, I hope that this is a direction that we see paved from rap and R&B artists in the future. Number 15 is the brutal and menacing Glove and Dog by Linecraft. When it comes to Linecraft, he certainly has some of the most powerful tracks when it comes to power electronics and death industrial, and this one did not disappoint. An extremely chaotic usage of sampling tying up with some amazing dark atmospheres from this minimal instrumental, such an incredible death industrial song, one of the best I've heard in recent years. Number 14 is Aoko by Rosalia. I did not expect I would end up liking this song as much as I did. But yeah, this in my opinion paves a really refreshing path when it comes to Latin pop directions. I would hope that we would get more tracks like this out of the album, but it was quite inconsistent. This one sounds awesome, the pacing, the drumming sections, the weird glitchy manipulated vocals at certain occasions. It is rare to see tracks as chaotic and weird to get this mainstream, but I'm all for it. This one is simply awesome. Number 13 is Transcript by Current Value. Definitely one of the most refreshing directions that I've seen from Current Value in basically ever. This one is really weird in terms of its structure, but it works amazingly. One of the most chaotic and experimental tracks in terms of structure and time signatures, tied up with immaculate production and an outstanding sidechain effect. This track is intense, powerful, it messes with your head and it sounds absolutely incredible. Number 12 is Mad Bates by Grimm, possibly the most insane and brutal song out of this entire list. The high frequencies out of this one are torturous, tied up with a minimal beat that weirdly works into the mix and also with some insane and brutal vocals. This is undoubtedly one of the greatest tracks out of the entire Grimm catalog. It's just pure insanity. Number 11 is Ultratronics 1 by Ryoji Keda. This album had quite a few very strong highlights, but this introduction over here is simply astonishing. It is a sound which is familiar for those who are aware of Ryoji Keda's work, but in very few cases has actually been this direct. And weirdly enough, this is easy to decipher. It contains the very glitchy and experimental approach that we get from his approaches on microsound and data sonification, but you can also sense structure and progression over here which makes for an experience that is certainly fulfilling. I love this track, it sounds immaculate and it's definitely one of my favorites out of Rio Chiqueda. And now getting to the top 10, at number 10 we have Let the Smokers Sign the Coops by Pusa T. Insanely good and hard hitting instrumental out of this one, loving the energy, the sampling work and once again Pusa T as a rapper has a really solid delivery, it hits really hard and it's definitely one of the most addictive songs for me out of the previous year. 
Number 9 is Sirens by Vitalik. This is a return to form as this track certainly brings back the glory out of the first days of Vitalik where he would make some spectacular techno and house tracks. This one has the imagination, it has the melodies, it sounds massive, it's powerful, it's highly energetic. I like all of its transitions, its overall pacing. I would hope that we would get even more tracks that would sound like this but this one is certainly excellent. Number 6 is Follower by Minded Machine. I was really skeptical as of what song I would pick out of the album but Follower ended up being the track that addicted me the most. There is something really fascinating about the sound choices out of this particular song and in essence that in my opinion no other song manages to catch as strong as this. Unbelievably catchy and energetic but also really dark and moody. Such a powerful combination of sounds done in an excellent way by Minded Machine over here. Number 7 is Black Mirror by Joseko. While Joseko's latest album had a lot of tracks that I didn't really care for, they always managed to do at least a few of them that really, really hit. And when a Joseko song hits with me, it makes for one of the best agrotech experiences ever for me. And it's no exception with Black Mirror, as weirdly enough, one of the bonus tracks ended up being one of my favorites, which is really shocking to me because this one is by far the best in my opinion out of what they did with their last album. This one just sounds incredible. It has many of the elements that I love from the sound of Hoshiko, from the vocals, the overall production, the sound choices, the dark atmosphere and all of those are present in Black Mirror. An intense, well-crafted, hard-hitting agrotech song done by the masters the way they know how to do. Number 6 is Chance of the Deep Ones by Bluta Snort. Wow, this one was insane and certainly an experience. This introduction right here captures perfectly insane drumming and some of the best riffs I've heard out of Bluetooth North, which says a lot because for me, Bluetooth North have some of the best riffs I've heard in black metal, but they still manage to do refreshing stuff and they push even further with this Lovecraftian aesthetic, which just shines really well with this particular song, which makes for what is undoubtedly the greatest black metal song I've heard out of this year and one of my favorite black metal songs out of the decade. Number 5 is the quite wacky and ridiculous Annoyed by Sit and Sign. For me, Sit and Sign have certain moments that simply hit really hard. And this heavily distorted electronic song uses minimalism and repetition as its biggest strengths. And it makes for 6 minutes of pure chaos and under in one of my favorite songs out of Sit and Sign, especially in recent years. Number 4 is my pick for the greatest drum and bass song out of the previous year, Come Closer by Comandante. This one was certainly unexpected for me because I wasn't aware of Comandante before this release, but I haven't been this excited and this invested in a drum and bass song for quite some time. This contains all of the elements that has made old school dark step sound so appealing. It is a 6 minute track of never ending heart popping energy, great melodies, great production, great sounds, an absolute banger of a drum and bass song. Number 3 is Sirens by Flume featuring Karolin Polacek in what is possibly one of my favorite vocal directions out of here because this track just sounds absolutely gorgeous. We got quite a few incredible songs out of the new Flume album but nothing tops this. One of my most listened songs out of the previous year, insanely good production, love how this hard hitting bass slightly distorts the vocals, it is one of the most well crafted and well executed electronic songs I've heard in a while, this one just sounds absolutely incredible, it is majestic but also managing to be really hard hitting and really chaotic and really out there, it is simply just such an outstanding experience. Number 2, I have Jungle by Fred again. This is undoubtedly my most played song out of 2022. I was playing this track non-stop for a period of time. It took me a while to really click with me, but when it did, I couldn't get this track out of my head. It has nothing particularly exceptional to it in terms of an electronic and house song, but I find the use of the vocal sampling out of this particular one to just sound so imaginative. It just crafted it such a spectacular way, I would just only wish it was even longer for this track to just go on and on, especially with the final part in which I believe that there could have been done even more to it and extend it even further. But my god, Jungle was such an addictive and incredible catchy song. 
but the number one spot goes undoubtedly to Snow Globes by Black Country New Road. In previous occasions it might have been a bit hard to decide which was gonna be my favorite song out of the year, but in the case of 2022 there was no competition. From the moment this 9 minute masterpiece edit, I already knew that this was one of my favorite songs of all time. And it is. This is one of the best things I've ever heard. This song in particular is undoubtedly one of the most heart-wrenching things I've ever heard. I believe that there is very, like very very few occasions where I've managed to be so emotionally invested and attached to the song to the point where it would bring me to tears. The way the song continuously progresses and elevates, how great the production is, how all of the instruments are just blended together so organically and beautifully into the mix. There's unstoppable and Furious drum solo being one of the most insane things I've ever heard, especially in a track like this. Yeah, this is just like big post rock for me. Love the lyricism, the vocals, the themes, everything. This is one of the very few occasions I've actually managed to be that much invested and that much overwhelmed with emotions from a song. And for me, this is without a doubt the greatest song I've heard out of 2022. And that is my list for the top 50 songs of 2022. What were your favorite tracks out of the previous year? Let me know down in the comments. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe for more content like this. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye.